Hey scientists! So today we are going to do an exploratory activity uh, learning about another kind of spinning. Last time we were spinning tops and we were spinning them around in this direction. Now we are going to be creating something called zoomers which go this direction when they're spinning. So here are the materials that you will need. You will need to get a string and um, when you're getting your materials make sure that you're super careful because the strings are all together and when you're taking your string you want to let everybody have a turn to go kind of slowly with this otherwise if, you, uh, if you're not careful the strings may get all tangled up luckily mine did not get tangled but it's really easy for them to get tangled so be careful all right then another material that you're going to need is a disc and here's my disc my disc i'm noticing has, although it has holes that were tried to be poked through it, it, the holes didn't go all the way through. So I'm going to need to take a pencil and very carefully poke those holes through and take off the little pieces that came out of the hole and take those, um, keep them so I can put them in the recycling. Hey, in the meantime, I now have holes all the way through. And so I'm going to take my string and, um, and start to try to thread it through. Now, sometimes string is not very cooperative and it ends up with these little ends like this, which make it really challenging to try to get it through. When that happens, you can try smoothing them together, but if that doesn't work, then my big tip is to try the other end of the string because oftentimes the other end of the string doesn't have the same problem. So then you can thread that through. However, if you find that both ends of your string are kind of like this, you can go ahead and get a scissors and try to cut off just the tiniest little bit off of the string to, um, to get that part that was really thready off. And then you'll have a nice little end that will go through your, um, your disc. And so I'm gonna put my string through and pull that through. And now, sorry for the light, um, we will take the string and get it through the other end as well or through the other side of the hole. And here I am pulling it through on the other side. So it's kind of, it kind of looks like a button on that side. And I'm gonna take this, I'm getting my ends together. Now, I'm going to need to tie a knot. And it's a little bit of a tricky thing um, because I know that a lot of us um, think about tying a knot like this. Like when we're tying our shoelaces, you take the two strings and you tie one around the other. But when you do that, it ends up taking up a lot, like keeping on going and going and going. And I want to have a really long string, so I need to do a different kind of knot called an overhand knot. So for this overhand knot, you'll take your two strings, you'll put those guys together. Um, you can see all the way nice and straight. And then you have to make a loop. It's a little tricky, so you take this and you kind of have to pass it around the other side, make your loop. And then you're gonna take this part and it's gonna go over the top of the other side so that it can go through the hole, All right? And the idea is to tie it as close to the top of the string as possible. So I don't wanna pull this way down low on the string, I wanna keep it up at the top. So I might push it a little bit towards the top as I'm pulling it tighter and tighter and tighter until I finally get my knot. And there you are. So you've got your knot down at the end and your um, disc is down at the other end. Now we're gonna to need to straighten it out in order to make this into a zoomer. So I need to pull on the side that used to be stuck right up against the disc until it's kind of in the middle here. And then this is important. You're gonna to need to put your thumbs or fingers, whatever feels right, through the holes. And the other thing that can be really helpful is keeping this little string with a little tab on it kind of nearby your finger so it doesn't get stuck in the middle of the um, in the middle of the thread where it can get hung on hung up on things and that'll be a little bit more clear in a minute so then what you do once you have your zoomer already made so it's ready to go is you're going to have a chance to take one hand kind of let it be loose and have one hand ready to kind of go around in a swinging motion to try to loop this around now in order for something to spin if you already have it spun a few times and you pull these strings tight you can already kind of see what's going to happen so I swung that around a few times, and then when I pull it, it wants to come straight again. It kind of spins it. Let me see if I can get a little bit more done. So when I pull, it wants to straighten out the, two, the strings on either side, right? 
as I pull them, it straightens out and it actually spun that disc to make that happen. Now, I'm gonna show you what could happen if you spin it around a few times. Now, this could happen, but it's also very tricky. So, you know, any kind of spinning that you do today is really good because what we're trying to focus on right now is the idea of being able to get something to spin. So I'm gonna to try to make it go around about 20 times to pre prepare it, so watch me do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And you saw me, um, while I was doing that, I was kind of letting it be loose and I was just twirling one hand around to get that to happen. Now I have all this spun uh, string here and my thumbs are through the ends so that when I pull it, it's gonna start to spin. So watch. Ooh, look, it's spun. And it's still kind of spinning a little bit. <laughs> so that didn't work out exactly the way I wanted to, so I'm gonna try it again. So about 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, okay. I'm gonna say that that was about enough. So I'm gonna pull. Oh, of course it's not working. Ha ha ha, for the video. All right, so I'm swirling it around, twirling, twirling, trying to get it to go. And now I'm gonna pull them apart. <laughs> it's actually kind of starting to do what it's supposed to be doing. So it's spinning and it's spinning. It's not as easy to do this with this, um, with this one, with the paper. So if you get any kind of spin though, that's something, right? So if I'm pulling it apart and I see it spinning, I could see that spinning, right? Spinning and spinning and spinning. Now, I'm gonna show you, if that's not working very well for you, another thing you can do is, there's one of these at each table that is made with a really heavy, um, heavier circle. And I remember that last time we talked about how when we were making tops, having something heavy seemed to really help to keep the top spinning longer. Well, it does make it a little bit easier for this too, to use a heavier, uh, disc. So I'm going to take this and it's kind of it's just made just like the other one where there's holes and it's threaded through, right? So I'm going to circle it around a few times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And when I pull it, it kind of spins. You guys see that? And it makes kind of a noise. You can even see that the strings are doing something funky and they're kind of pulling my hands together. I'm going to just go back a little bit so you can see. So this, as it spins, it pulls the thread kind of with this, the um, spun up threads. And as <laughs> you can hear it making a noise, that's why this is called a zoomer, because it can sometimes make a zooming noise. Not as easy to do with the paper ones, but the paper ones are the ones you get to take home. Also, um, you can try this a few times with friends and then you can let someone else have a turn. Um, so it is pretty cool to make it zoom like that. But these you won't get to take home. These you have to leave at school. This one you get to try to take home. So um, once you've had a chance to try to get it to spin at least a little bit, like I even just got a little spin there, right? You can see it spinning. Um, you can decorate either side of this. Um, this side too, although this side might show up a little bit better. And then when you spin it, you can see what happens to your design. So it'll be kind of interesting to see like what is going on when it's spinning. You can also sometimes, sometimes, and it's kind of tricky, get this one to do the zoomy thing. I will try that one more time. So one more thing that I'm going to try to do is make sure that this stays on my thumb. And here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I pull. Ooh, it's kind of doing it a little bit. Not great though. Nope. <laughs> Try one more time. Last time for the video. And I pull it. Ooh, it might actually be working this time. A little bit. <laughs> it's really tricky though. It's kind of working. Not 100%. But um, you can kind of see it kind of pulling in a little bit and kind of twirling and then kind of coming apart and twirling the other direction. And so anyway, that is a pretty cool thing. If your thumbs start to get kind of painful from trying to pull and pull and pull, you can also use a pencil. So I'm gonna try it again, only this time I'm gonna do it with this. So you can put a pencil through on one side and then you have to put a pencil through on the other side as well. So I've got my pencil through one side and I'm sliding this pencil through the other side. 
And then really careful so don't poke anybody with my pencils. I'm gonna spin one side. I kind of have my fingers over the tips of my pencil so I don't poke anybody. And then when I pull, I can pull my pencils apart instead of having to pull my fingers apart. And that way, hopefully my fingers won't get bruised because it does kind of squeeze your fingers a little bit. It doesn't really hurt them, but it squeezes your fingers a little bit. When it pulls together, then you have to pull apart. Woo, that's exciting. Look at that zooming and spinning. Pretty exciting stuff. Anyway, so now you know how to make a zoomer and hopefully you'll be able to do a pretty good job. Sometimes when you take it off, it'll be all wound up like this. Don't get discouraged. You can just very gently unwind it and it should work. You want to unwind the other side as well. Whoopsie do. Might take a little while, but you know, I don't mind getting in the learning pit with figuring out how I'm gonna get it apart. There we go. So now I've got my zoomer all ready to go and I can put it back on the table for someone else to try while I'm trying to get my cardboard one to work and to see what happens when I spin it. Ooh, pretty cool, right? All right, thanks so much.